Hey everybody, back again for some more GetNuevo videos. Now, since I've released this module, one of the questions that I've gotten uh, quite a few times is, can you add support for pitch to GetNuevo? And the answer, of course, is yes, that is something that I could do. But I do not have plans to do that. And in this video, I want to give you a little bit of the background why, but more importantly, I want to show you why that can actually present you with a more powerful situation and how you can take that and use that creatively in your own musical creations. Now, if you think about the keyboard, and this is actually reflected in the design of Voltage Modular, the keyboard itself output a minimum of two signals, gate and pitch. Think about them separately. Of course, the obvious one pitch is depending on which key you press, there's a different one volt per octave signal that comes out. On the gate side of it, there isn't really a difference to the gate signal. You can press any key on the keyboard and it will send out the same gate signal. In effect, there is, you know, what, 88 keys that you can use to send the exact same gate signal. Now you might be wondering why I'm pointing this out. And it's because in a modular context, one of the things that modular affords that it allows you to do that is otherwise somewhat difficult in a modern DAW is that you can decouple rhythm or gate signals from melody or pitch signals. Now, when we come back to Gate Nuevo and we start thinking about that, one of the ideas behind why I did not include pitch is that there are a variety of ways for you to create pitch. Gate Nuevo provides a platform to create rhythm, and how you map that rhythm into pitch is entirely up to you. Now this maybe sounds abstract and complex, but let me set up a simple patch to show you. So I have added two modules to this patch. One is the 8-step sequencer by Cherry Audio. This I believe is included with uh, either with Voltage Modular or with one of the core um, module packs. The other one that I have added here is the SEM, the Synthesizer Expander Module. Now you don't need to have this one, I'm using this just for uh, audio demonstration. So. The heart of the idea here is that we will take the rhythm from Gate Nuevo and use that to push the pitch forward, effectively letting Gate Nuevo control the rhythm through its gate signal and letting 8-step control the pitch through its sequencing here. So to do that, I'm going to take the step output and I'm going to route that to external clock. Make sure to turn external clock on. Then I'm going to take active and route that to start. Now, I haven't talked about active before, but active is basically a gate signal that will be high whenever Gate Nuevo is playing, and it will be low whenever Gate Nuevo is stopped. So you can see here, uh, as I press play, it will turn on this sequencer. But more importantly, something else is happening, which is as the cursor for the current track progresses, every time it encounters an on step, it will send a gate signal out, which will go into external clock, and that will advance which pitch we are going to be getting on the output of this sequencer. So take a note here, actually I'm going to slow this down. So you can see here, as this cursor encounters a step, it will advance which pitch is being played. Now if you've watched my previous videos, you know that there's an important setting here which I've already turned on, and that is the accent routing. I've set it to step plus accent to make sure that regardless of if we encounter a simple or an accent step, we will be getting a pulse here on the step output. I've made a couple of changes that I want to highlight here. Uh, first of all, I added in some pitches. So we have C, E, G, and C. So this is a, a major triad with an octave of the root. The other thing that I did is I reduced this part particular sequence down to four steps. So you can see here, there's only four. Um, this is just going to give us behavior that's like a, a basic arpeggiator. Um, the other thing that I did is I converted the random algorithm to be motif. I find that this tends to be a little bit better for this type of thing, but we can play around with different options. All right, so let's take a listen. Now, while that doesn't sound amazing on its own, there's a key thing that's happening here, which is we were able to set our pitches in one place and our rhythm in another. And so that means that we can freely modify 
what the rhythm is and the pitches will stay the same. So we can leave that set of pitches and play around with a rhythm that we like. And I find this idea actually quite powerful for coming up with uh, interesting phrases where I only have to think about one thing at a time. I can think what pitches do I want distinct from what rhythm do I want. So I'm going to generate some more random rhythms here. Try going faster. Because Gate Nuevo is a separate rhythm source, we could use either an accent from this track or we could use a second track as a modulation source. In this case, I'm going to use accent actually to modulate the voltage cutoff so that every time we hit one of these accent points, we will get a much higher uh, opening of the, of the filter. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. I'm going to use track two as the kick drum. And what I'm going to do here when I set this up, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll use that. Here's one last idea for you in playing around with separate rhythm and pitch. You can start with a relatively short sequence, and then as you change the length of it, it changes the sound of the overall sequence. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we started off here with a relatively short sequence of four particular steps. Those will apply to these four pitches in a certain way. And then I can add some interest by adding more length while it's playing. Let's take a listen. Have fun.